Okay. Well, if you check the chat, I put in a link to the agenda if people want to follow along the agenda. Um, welcome everyone to the first 2024 general meeting for the Monroe County chapter of the National Organization for Women. I am Tammy Jo Eckhart. I am the new president. And today we're going to introduce the new board. So hi, I kind of already introduced myself. Um, I actually joined this group back in 2017 when it was created. And at that time I served on the communications committee and I served there for many years. And I also helped run uh, elections and proof newsletters. I wrote a history column for us for what, like two and a half, three years. Um, and now I've come back to be your president. I'm gonna let the other officers introduce themselves. So vice president, would you start? Yeah, my name is Natalia Galvin. I am the vice president of Monroe County now. Um, I'm working on two very specific things this year. Um, I am working on the GOTV grant. Uh, we just um, sent it off um, uh, this week and uh, also working with Indiana Now to kind of help um, marginalized um, people in that area get out to vote uh, in uh, North Central Indiana. So um, I'm also on the state board and then I work, I'm working on a GOT or a GOT, a public safety grant that we received from the city of Bloomington, um, also to increase um, awareness about our late night Uber rides that are subsidized by Bloomington Transit and also um, working on awareness on safety in public uh, garages. So um, a member came to us with those two concerns. So we apply for this grant and I'm working on those two things. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mandy, our treasurer. Hello, uh, Mandy Yates. I'm the treasurer again this year. Um, previously I've been the president and the communications director um, and I helped start the chapter, uh, what was that, seven years ago at this point? So anyway, I, I am also on the state board with Natalia, um, and I am her money bitch when it comes to our grant funding. <laughs> That's how we talk, folks. We're, we're, we're raw and, you know. <laughs> um, Heather, can you talk about being the secretary? All right, so Heather Glass is our new secretary and she keeps track of our minutes for our board meetings and for these minute meetings, but she has also stepped up and she is working on our social media as well as looking into our April meeting topic, which is gonna focus on um, housing and security in Bloomington. And finally, but not least is membership. Hi, I'm Julie Hardesty. I'm the membership director. Uh, this is my fourth year uh, being membership director for Monroe County now. And um, this year I am, I'm working on getting all of the documentation together for the four years of membership work that I've been doing. So if somebody else is interested in doing membership director, it's going to be something that somebody else can come in and do. So <laughs> I feel like I've ended up kind of taking it over because it's been four years now. But anyway, we've got... Um, this year, right now, uh, we're at 64 uh, chapter members, and um, I believe everyone on here is a member at this point. So uh, when your membership is up for renewal, we do send out reminders for that. So you will, we'll send you a reminder when it's time. Um, if you have friends who are not members, uh, membership is available on a sliding scale from $10 to $40 per year, whatever works for them, no questions asked. Um, and this, we have a join form that is available, um, uh, oops, sorry, um, on our website. Um, you can also share this link with folks if there's anyone that's interested in joining. Uh, and you are also eligible as a new member if you've recently joined for, uh, you're eligible for a Monroe County Now t-shirt, uh, which I'm, I'm wearing one right now. Um, so and while supplies last, but I'm pretty sure we're, we're good on supplies at this point. So let us, let me know what your size is and we will get you set up with a t-shirt and you can email me with any questions along those lines at this address. So 
That is my update. Thank you, Julie. All right, we have a little bit of business uh, to get out of the way before we celebrate um, Shirty and hear her talk about her experiences with this organization and in Bloomington as well. Uh, the first is we have a call out for volunteers. Um, there are only five of us right now trying to do everything. Uh, the other positions we have available are communications, fundraising, legislative action, LGBTQ plus rights, racial justice, and reproductive justice. The board meets at least 10 times a year, usually but not always by Zoom. And I'll put this, this is the link if you want to see what these positions are. And you can check them out. That's our um, operating rules. And they list like what each position does and is responsible for. And if you would like to run for one of these positions or you know someone who would, you would email me at this email. And I also wanna say that it can be very intimidating to just like jump in, you know, to lead one of these parts, one of these facets of the organization. So we also just need people to step up and help. Um, you know, calls go out when we like are at events, it's useful to have extra people at the table, um, to have extra people, you know, show up, make signs, um, bounce ideas, you know, help the people who are currently doing the work um so in any way you'd want to get involved please contact me and let me know and then i wanted to bring up uh what's going to be happening in the future at these board meetings um we will have usually eight of them a year and we have been generating a lot of ideas uh i'll just share a couple of them with you i think i mentioned that in april we're going to have a meeting with different people who are working on housing insecurity here in Bloomington and Monroe County. We're also, um, I'm trying to put together a group of panelists who work with the local media, so news organizations and outlets to talk to them about how do they cover the issues that this organization cares about. We want to uh, highlight some of the creative people in our community who, you know, create with a vision towards talking about all these issues that we care about. Um, you know, we were thinking about trying to do another film night where we watch a film, preferably a documentary, and then we we talk about it and we meet with the people who are, you know, producing it, find out what they're doing. We also had ideas to uh, have sort of face-to-face get-togethers with allied groups or groups we hope to be allies with in the summer so that as we get closer and closer to the election, we can kind of work together and just kind of meet each other face to face and see each other. And we have a couple of other ideas, but we also want to get your ideas. Like, what do you want Monroe County to do? And, and let me be perfectly honest and warn you, if you come up with an idea, I'm going to ask you then to help put that idea into motion, right? That's, that's how this works. So use that email again if you have ideas or at the end of the evening, um, if you've thought of something, you know, jot it down and let us know about it, please. Um, our meetings will primarily be on Zoom, except for maybe those couple face-to-face -face meetings. We're just going to have to see, you know, what's happening. But we do find that if we have it on Zoom, then people from different cities and different parts of Monroe County, but also different counties, right? Because we kind of cover a huge chunk of Indiana here can attend versus you know, coming face to face in an evening. Um, they're gonna be the fourth Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. Uh, please read the newsletters and the social media because as I said, we're gonna try to have a couple events that are outside of that framework. And also keep your eyes peeled for the first ever member survey we're going to be sending out. And this is kind of, Natalia talked about, you know, the thing she's focused on. This is really what I'm focused on, is trying to get people more involved. And so we are using a template from national and kind of changing some things around. And we want to get feedback from all of you. You know, so we know, like, how are we doing? Where can we improve? Um, 
And so we're going to really get that out here. Probably, I'm guessing, March or so would we'll probably get it to you, I'm hoping. The other big thing I'm working on is we as a board are going to take a workshop in inclusivity. And then we're going to evaluate how that goes for us. And if we feel that it would be valuable to the general membership, then that's something we would like to offer the general membership because we can talk the talk, right? We can talk all these different rights and justices that we want to pursue as this organization, but that work needs to start inside of us in this organization. And so that is what we're going to be doing in our March board meeting. Part of it is taking this workshop. All right, so let's pause for a second here. Does anyone have any questions or comments for the board or about anything I've said so far? All right, well, now I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of us came here because we want to celebrate um, the woman of the hour. Um, Mandy, would you like to do the introductions? Well, for a second there, I thought you were calling me the woman of the hour. I'm like, oh, I'm so honored. Thank you. You, you can be the woman of honor in another meeting. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. to no, no, no. Uh, okay. Well, I would like to introduce Shruti Rana. Um, I met Shruti actually when she first moved to Bloomington and we were starting this chapter. Um, I met her at SOMA and she was getting ready to have Eva at that point. So um, Shruti has the honor of have, giving birth to our first uh, Monroe County Now baby. Um, and anyway, she's just been a wonderful friend throughout the years. And I um, I don't wanna cry, but I'm so sad that she's no longer in Bloomington. So I will just give the floor to Shruti, welcome. Well, thank you so much. And I'm gonna try not to cry too. Um, so, um, We'll see how successful I am at that. But um, but I just wanted to start off by saying, um, I feel like each new group of leaders in MC Now has taken the organization in a different direction and usually been really exciting. And I love the topics that you just laid out, Tammy Jo. Um, and I think um, there's really exciting stuff ahead. And, um, and I think this is a great group of like, um, you all have lots of experience both with the issues, but also with working with MC now and and a lot of energy and taking it in different directions. Um, so, um, so I'm really excited to be the woman of the hour. It made me feel really special too. So thank you. <laughs> um, so what I thought I would do, Tammy Jo um, invited me to come talk about my experience with the chapter here and to just kind of reflect on some things, um, as well as just you know let everyone know about some of the work that we've done. And that's actually a really um, a bigger job than I thought. I was trying to put together some pictures and I was like, I have so many pictures that like, um, it's even hard to sort through them. And like you were talking about Eva, I have a picture of us standing in front of the state house, like holding our fists up in the air with like Eva being um, eight weeks old. I don't know why I thought I could just go to the state house with a baby and like just whatever and like, you know, protest and then um, and I spent half of the protest like or it wasn't a protest. We were there like, you know, in, you know, against, you know, standing up against one of the things that was going on in the legislature. And I spent most of it nursing outside in the hallway with like the state house, like the guard staring at me and, you know, but I have a picture of that. Um, so um, so what I thought I would do is talk a little bit about my experiences, but kind of try to um, center it a little bit in, in sort of a little bit of the history of the chapter here and how um, I think what was going on, what's been going on in this chapter really reflects a lot of really interesting national trends. And I feel like what this chapter has been able to do is um, kind of join these national debates and elevate what's going on in Bloomington and Monroe County into this larger stage, but also connect with all these different groups and then bring some of the work to Monroe County and Bloomington. And so I just wanted to um, kind of situate like my personal experiences within like the history of the chapter, as well as how I think it relates to, you know, we're just in a really formative, um, important moment, maybe even, you know, there's lots of words we could use for this particular moment um, in, um, in our nation's history and, and our state. Um, so like Mandy was saying, um, I joined now um, the very first meeting of the revitalized chapter. I know that there was a Monroe County Now chapter that had existed through the 90s and kind of 
gone off and on in terms of being dormant or not. And um, and I, Mandy knows more about the story than me, but sometime around the end of 2016, when we had this really momentous presidential election, um, everybody was really angry and upset and a group of people got together and decided to restart the chapter. And um, one of, so I moved to Bloomington in the winter of 2016. And one of my first memories is that there was a call out meeting in the library and in the Monroe County Library. And I think the room was packed and you had a live stream. And um, like Mandy was saying, I think it was six or seven months pregnant when um, this was going on. So this was January, 2017. And so I decided to watch it from home and I wasn't sure, like, should I make the trek out to the library or whatever? And I remember this meeting being live streamed. And I remember Mandy being there. I remember Laura and Jennifer Crossley and a couple of other people standing there. And it was this really emotional moment. Like if you think back in time to kind of what we we're all feeling at the end of 2016, the beginning of 2017, like all this stuff was going on. We all felt like we had to do something, but everyone, you know, it was hard to imagine, like, it was just like, you know, crises popping up right and left, like, you know, it's like, on the one hand, immigrants are being attacked, then reproductive rights are being attacked, and this other thing, right? And there's so much going on. And I think there was so much of a desire to do something and stand up for something, but also to know how to do it and where to start and what to do. And I was looking for all these pictures, and I was, I was cleaning out my work office, and I found this, like, this poster, I don't know if you can see it, I guess you can't see it with the, the blur. But um, it's it's some like weird painting that I don't even know how I got of the Women's March and it says this is only it's, it's like it's people's signs. And one of them is this is only the beginning and if only we knew right and then it says I'm with her, which is a phrase I totally forgot about already. Um, and um, science is real love is love hope not fear things like that. Um, but um, so just going back to this moment in January 2017 I think there was just this tremendous energy all these things fear and hope um, and this desire to do something and so I remember thinking what an amazing group of people I really want to get involved. Um, I want to see what they're going to do and I like signed up right there on the spot um, and joined the group. Um, and so I think that and I didn't know it at the time I signed up for lots of things when I first got to Bloomington and I didn't know that this would be such a transformative thing for me and that I'd get these like what I consider you all like my lifelong friends from this experience. Um, and, um, and it's been so interesting. I feel like we've experienced these things we've done this work and then I'll like go read like a news article or like a journal article and it'll describe the women's movement and I'll always think that is exactly what we've been doing here um, in Monroe County in Bloomington. So that's what I thought I would talk a little bit about. So I guess going back to um, this moment in time, um, we now know that the Women's March that was held in January 2017 is, um, is supposed to be the biggest single day protest in US history. Um, and we knew that it was a big thing. We knew big things were happening, but we, we didn't know kind of the historical meaning of some of these things, I think, and that that meaning is still emerging. So I felt like, you know, just like nationwide, we had this huge outpouring of people, we had a huge outpouring of people in um, Bloomington and Monroe County, people who wanted to do something. And, um, and I think we saw a lot of the national debates and struggles echoed locally, but we dealt with them in a different way in ways that I'm really proud of, actually, and I think has, you know, going back to what I was saying about how we have a sort of really vibrant community and I think um, I really think what the, the work that's been done in Monroe County um, now has reflected these debates in the community and helped change what was happening in the community and vice versa right what's happening in the community has changed all of us. So, um, so I want to just um, touch upon um, a couple of things. Um, some of the key moments, I think. So, so we had this like tremendous rush to organize and do something, and we had this chapter with all this energy. And the first thing that happened, um, I think, is very similar to what we see in the national women's movement. A lot of people rush in and say they want to do things and help. And there's an initial flurry of activity and lots of like, we set up lots of different groups and subcommittees and all these different things. And then um, two things happen. One is that people start getting back in, involved in their normal lives and 
it's unclear like what structure will work. Like you might've had 20 people sign up for a committee and then you have a meeting and four of them show up and it's four really dedicated people, but is it like everybody sort of free writing off of their work or is it that there's four dedicated people and people will just show up as they have time and space. And then how do you how do you have a structure that sustains this? Because these are not people's full-time jobs, right? It's, it's like you're, it's all the work that's going on on top of things. And I would say the other thing I've learned is that the type of people who join Monroe County now are already totally overextended and have really busy lives because they care so much about what's happening in the community and because they care so much about other people. And the organization is built by people who have that much energy, but also have to like figure out how to share the, share the burdens. And I feel like that's something we learned over time, right? In the beginning, we jump in and all try to do everything or leave it to one person to do everything. And I think over time, I saw that we really started doing this like pass the ball or something that when one person has had the time and energy, they would you know, you know, go gung ho, like full force ahead and do all this work. And the amazing thing about the organization is then when you reach that moment, you're like, I'm so exhausted, I feel depleted, or I'm demoralized or something, someone would step in and say, well, now it's my turn. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this to the next level. And, um, and then someone, you know, when they when they felt like they were tapped out, or they had done it, someone else would come in. And, um, and I think that that's a really interesting model that I haven't seen work anywhere else. Like I've seen it work in like a family situation or something like that, where you know you can count on each other. Um, but I've really seen that work in Monroe County now. And I've also seen um, something I think is really important is that, um, you know, again, this is reflected, I think nationally, we have this whole debate over self care and what it means to um, when you're doing this kind of work, when you're fighting for reproductive justice and for rights in a very tremendously hostile environment, um, it's, it's tough on people's mental health. It's tough on like just your energy levels and what you're doing. And so there's been this conversation about self-care that I think is more productive when you think about how do you fill back your bucket, right? And that's another thing that I think Monroe County now has done really well, or the groups of people involved, is that I've often felt like, you know, you get really burned out or you get exhausted or you're like, oh my gosh, like we worked so hard against the abortion ban and we were so close to like these companies coming out in the middle of the night and saying they weren't going to support it. And we thought that would change the dialogue. And then in the middle of the night, the bill gets pushed through. You wake up the next morning and you see what happened. All these things are really demoralizing. And then, um, and you're just like, why did I do all of this? Why did I spend all this time, you know? And then I feel like I would get together with this group of people. And then you remember why you're doing it, right? And that there's so many people who care and somehow like just everybody would just refill each other's buckets, right? I feel like, um, I feel like, Mandy always had the perfect um, thing to say that was usually totally unprintable about like whatever politician or whatever bill was going on. And then we'd be like, yeah, you know, like, you know, um, and then like get really energized again and just be like, we can beat them. We know that we can do this. We know that we can, um, you know, that, you know, whatever's going on in the legislature or other places, it has to be temporary and the truth will win out and we just have to um, wait for that moment. And um, and so I think that is really important. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is just the incredible like set of tools that I have gotten from this organization and I've seen other people get. So um, I just wanna tell a couple of quick stories and then just talk about some of the challenges that we think that we've faced and that I think are still left to face um, in our community. But, um, um, I think, you know, when I talk about tools, one of the things I'm proudest about with this organization is that you see a lot of changes in membership over time and you see a lot of ebbs and flows and you'll see things like the January 2017 meeting. I think it had 200 people or something, right? There's 200 people at the library and then all these people online. I don't even know how many it ended up. And then sometimes a meeting would have 60 people. Sometimes it would have 10. Sometimes we'd have a rally and 200 people showed up, right? It's It's always sort of you know, um, very much in flux. And I think that reflects two different things. One is that, like I was saying, the people who are out there in the community caring about these issues and doing things are the people who are caring about lots of issues in the community and doing things and have really busy schedules and just have to pick and choose what they're gonna go to when. Um, and it's nice that we have this platform that you can join or not, or be a part of different issues or activities or not as you have time. But the other thing I think is really important is that I've seen Monroe County now be a real launching pad. Like we'd have a group of people come in, get really into an issue, 
get, you know, learn organizing tools, start creating change, learn how to make an impact, get to know the people who are working on a particular issue in the city or county, and then they would start their own organization focused on that particular issue um, and just branch out and do that. And I love that. To me, it's like these, ultimately it's like this tree, right? Where all the branches lead back to organizations like Monroe County Now. I'm not gonna say that Monroe County Now did all of them, but I think it's been a piece of a lot of the organizations. And I think that's tremendously meaningful. That's like the best compliment you can ever have that somebody joins your organization, learns how to do, um, get gains the skills and the tools that they need to get to whatever goal that they're looking for. And then they have the skills and tools to go out and say, we're just gonna start this new organization or we're gonna branch out into this effort. Um, and there's a bunch of different things. So I can see that like that whole, like hundreds of people who showed up in January, 2017, most of them are still involved in these issues, but in different ways, right? There was an immigrants rights, um, immigrant and refugee rights network that was started. There was the persisterhood workshop. Um, I know the Moms Demand chapter got really um, vibrant and um, energized. There were people who did all sorts of education initiatives and things. And every time I would go to meetings and like see what people were doing, I would either say, oh, I recognize that person. They're from Monroe County, or I met them at Monroe County Now, or I would have seen the work that they were doing as part of Monroe County Now and then see how they took it to something else, right? Um, and did something amazing with it. like. Um, I think the Persisterhood Workshop is a great example that um, like Deb Meter was one of the founding or at least an early member of Monroe County now and did all this exciting stuff. And then I remember that time I was just telling you about when I brought an eight week old baby to the courthouse um, um, and I was like, I don't even know how to change a diaper on the go. And she was like, I do, right? And like, <laughs> you know, did, did all this stuff. And um, and then, you know, and then went and founded the Persisterhood Workshop, focusing more on like resistance and advocacy and reproductive justice work, but through art and craftivism, right? So um, so I just love that real vibrancy. So um, so so one of the things I want to say, we have this whole national movement, all these things, same things happening in Bloomington, and then we see that people like take that energy and do amazing productive things and create this really like add to the really thriving ecosystem we have um, in Monroe County. Um, then I was gonna say that, um, again, I feel like a lot of really big national issues we've had to deal with as a microcosm in, in Bloomington itself. So for example, I remember when we were all getting involved in Monroe County now, a lot of people were like, do we actually wanna be a part of national now, right? There was a huge debate over um, mismanagement by the national board. There were allegations of racism and white supremacy, and um, there was a generational divide, right, between you know, sort of people who'd been involved in the organization for decades, and then people who were coming in with new energy. And there were all sorts of clashes that like played out in like national newspapers, right? And we're all sitting here like listening to what some of these people are saying, and we're just like do we want to be a part of this, an organization where the national leader says these things that are just really inappropriate and whatever. And, um, and, you know, and I think that what everybody ultimately decided is that whatever was going on in the national level, we had the autonomy to do what we wanted at the local level, but with some structure and funding from the national organization. And so we could create the organization we wanted and watch and learn from what was going on and try to change it, right? Because as, as a, chapter people get a vote and then um the the leaders of this chapter like mandy and natalia and julie um you've all gone on to state leadership positions in um in now right and have a say in the national level which we didn't have at all in the beginning right we would just watch these things from afar now we have people who can like who have voting rights and can stand up and say you know to, to vote people out or say this is wrong or something like that. And I think that's that's part of what I was saying about this, like real, like, you know, getting these tools and expanding them. Um, and then I was gonna um, point to a couple things that just some like key moments that I thought were really good examples of, of the types of things that, that we did. So, um, you know, so we have um, the beginning of the organization, reproductive justice was always an issue in Indiana and um, the members of Monroe County now were always out there at the state house. We had a number of rallies in 2018, 2019, we didn't during the pandemic. And then we had 2022 and 2023 focused on different reproductive rights issues. 
Um, and we also had, we had one of our members, Abby Ang, did a lot of work with the farmer's market and the issue of Nazis in the farmer's market. Again, one of those issues that got us in the New York Times, like got our city in the New York Times for really negative reasons. And I felt like I learned so much from what Abby and others did um, in those moments, right? The way that they were like, you know, I saw how just if you look a certain way or like aren't part of traditional leadership, you will be challenged every single step of the way. And people will try and, you know, challenge every single thing you say and act like you don't know what you're talking about, even if you're talking about your own life experience and the impact something has on you. And um, and I saw Abby and the people involved in that issue like just keep going no matter what, right? Understanding that these things were happening and they did really create change, I think. I think um, you know, we have, there's this quote out there that I'm going to misquote because I don't remember the exact thing, but, um, somebody said it about this town in Vermont, like one of those liberal towns in Vermont that people, people move here because it's a liberal, um, welcoming environment and, and they leave here because it's not a welcoming or inclusive environment. Right. And I thought that that really encapsulates what we see in Bloomington and Monroe County. And I felt like the farmer's market clash was one of those key moments where you saw the traditional leadership of the city sort of come up and say, why is this a big deal? Why are you ruining the market for us? Um, can't you just avoid the Nazis or whatever? And then you have people coming in and saying, they are directly threatening to me. And, you know, and why would I ever go to a market where there are Nazis trying, like, you know, where you're not safe and and that people, like there are, there are different meanings to the word safety and security. And you like, it's, important to listen to people's experiences and why it matters and why it cares or why we should care and um and i felt like um that was a real turning point for me just to see how local advocacy and people who um were you know were were willing to persist and also um you know willing to deal with the nuances willing to maybe willing isn't the right word, but able to withstand like the constant challenging of every single thing that you do um, just, you know, for the right thing. And they're doing it for other people, right? Not just for themselves. Um, so I felt like that was a big turning point, which I think it really, it was one of those moments that happens every once in a while that really sort of casts a light on what's actually happening in the city, right? That people say all these things and they say all these nice things and they say that they are inclusive and care about issues, but then when it comes to actually doing the work or doing something meaningful, they won't do it. And then they'll push back on the people who are trying to make things happen and say, you are causing problems or you are being disruptive or you're ruining this for everybody else. And, um, and that the whole system is set up that way. So those people have the loudest voices and their voices are naturally amplified and the people who are doing the challenging um, are not, right? Often, um, you know, they'll just be totally overlooked. Um, and, you know, an example of that is um, my first city council meeting. I was so excited that Maria and a couple of other people came and talked about their experiences. And there were people who had never been to a city meeting before ever and never made public comment and said some really important, interesting things. And when the news reported about who made comments, they cited, they quoted um, the Chamber of Commerce, which, you know, I think nothing against the organization, but that's an organization that's at almost every city council meeting, right? Um, and they just defaulted to just repeating whatever they said instead of what the people who were talking about really pressing issues of security. Um, and the whole meeting was supposed to be about security, safety and security, right? Um, just nobody reported on it, right? It's just like, it doesn't, it didn't even occur to anybody to report on it, I think, um, until like we started say, like, you know, you know, trying to say something about it. Um, so then, um, so I think there was a farmer's market. Then I saw that the organization had exactly what we saw at the national level, sort of a, um, I don't know if I want to say battle, but a struggle between the sort of traditional feminists versus like intersectional feminists. Um, I'll just put it like as two big generalizations, but just the same thing that you saw on the national stage where you saw the Women's March movement sort of like split apart into these different groups, there were some people who were like, this is how we define what women issues are and these are the only things that we care about and issues that pertain to race are racial issues it's not a women's issue to care about racial justice or reproductive justice is only for women it's not for non-binary people or it doesn't include men or it doesn't include trans women or something like that 
And I was so proud of the organization for really standing up for, um, you know, in those debates, really standing up for the more inclusive environment and saying, um, you know, it's not someone's job to decide if something is a gender issue or a racial issue. It's does it pertain to our like core mission, right, of justice and reproductive justice? And how do you define those? And you lose when you narrow things and try to exclude people and you win when you build strong coalitions and you build diverse coalitions. And I saw that struggle play out in the organization itself, as well as other organizations. Um, in Monroe County, and I saw the organization emerge so much stronger and so much more diverse in every sense of the word um, than than it was before. And I think that was maybe not than it was before, but the, but then then it could have been right if like you know if if the battles or struggles had gone the other way. And now I feel like we have people from every age group. Um, different racial groups, people who identify in lots of different ways, people who are working on so many different issues related to justice, however it is that you know that you define it focused on economic justice or reproductive justice, or whatever, and again, sort of bringing these lenses to the work and working together and building these coalitions. Um, so, um, so I guess, um, so we have the farmers market, we have these like, you know, generational slash definitional struggles. And then I saw this just explosion of work that Monroe County now was doing and accomplished, right? We had rally, every time we put together a reproductive rights rally, we had hundreds of people show up um, at the at the, um, the courthouse, um, you know, downtown. And um, when I was saying that we occasionally get in the national news, that was one of the times we got in the national news. It was like reproductive justice rallies all around the country. And look, even in the middle of rural Indiana or whatever, they sort of slightly misrepresented like what you know Monroe County was. But nonetheless, they were like, look, even in rural Indiana, here, here are people marching. And like, um, and that was us, right? That was one of our reproductive justice rallies. And, and I felt like, you know, we really helped blow the cover on it's not that these things happen in certain areas and don't It's that people are fighting for these issues all over the country. It just is that some it's just a difference about who's in charge and like what the officials look like in the government and you know wh who has the most power but people all over the country care about these issues and are on the ground and like sticking around and like fighting for for these issues right like i totally understand if someone feels like they need to flee to a safe, safer environment or something but i also deeply respect the people who are like we're going to stay and fight um in these areas where all of these things are at risk right and i really saw that as part of the group um so um, another big challenge, so I was talking about um, these issues of inclusion, and I saw like how certain certain people were always challenged no matter what they did, certain people were never challenged no matter what they did. Um, and the other thing I saw as part of this organization is everybody works so hard and accomplishes so much in so many different ways and doesn't stop to like get credit or or just you know, no one asks for to be patted on the back and say, applaud me for what I did or whatever. And it's because you're like people are focused on the issues and are wanting change, not a thank you, right? You're not doing it for the thank you or the glory of whatever. You're doing it for creating that change. And what that means is that I've seen over and over, I've seen people come in and try to take credit for the work of the people in this group and women of color in particular, but just the group in general and just sort of co-opt it and say, um, here, like, you know, there's all this work that's been done, it's so successful, and just act like it was their idea and they did it. And knowing that the type of people who are out there fighting for these issues are not the type of people who will go around fighting for credit because they're focused on the issue, not on like, you know, who gets the most glory or like who gets their picture in the paper the most times. And I think that's really unfortunate. This goes back to part of what I was saying about who reports on what and why, right? Why is it that certain people always get reported on no matter what they do, even if they're not doing anything all that exciting and people who are doing something new and different, like you have to you have to be there over and over and over again. And maybe three years into it, someone will start asking you questions and asking you what you're doing there um, and then sort of dismiss what you're doing and give someone else credit for it, right? I just see that over and over again. Um, and then, um, so let me, I wanted to put together, as I said, I had so many pictures, like I could spend weeks, um, but I just put together a couple of like fun ones. So I'm just going to try to share my screen and see if I can, can I share my screen? I think I have, oh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Is that? Let me see. Um, or I could email you. 
the pictures really quick. If you make her host, she can share her screen. Okay, and then she can give it back to you. All right, there you go. Great. Um, it's super short. So can you guys see my screen? It's a yes. Okay. Yes, yep, we can so see them. I just, um, this is just an example of like some of the things I thought were all these different groups that we like worked with um, and did things with. Um, and um, just like we had all this abortion ban literature and all these get out to vote things like every year. Um, and then I found this act now that was us in 2018, I think. I don't know if you remember. I even have, I still have signs and like the postcards from this. But we were like, I, I love it. It's like act now, no matter where you live, tell all these legislative assistants to give your message, right? No abortion bans, right? And we had like various versions of this message and all the phone numbers and everything. Um, and then this, so this is the 2018 one where we got hundreds of people and that's where we got in the national news as like look people in Indiana actually care about abortion rights or something as if we didn't. Um, and then um, and then this one on the right is the rally that we had last September when the they finally the abortion ban that we'd worked so hard for years to prevent actually went into force, it was like we had this vigil right a vigil and a rally. And I just love how if you look at all of these different groups, right? I don't think a lot of these groups were around in 2017, right? Hoosier Jews for Choice started recently. Um, we have Monroe County, um, Indiana, uh, Monroe County now. Um, all options started in 2018, I think. Um, I can't see what that small one is. Well, the city of Bloomington was around. Um, Napoff, Indiana, which is now Hoosier Asian American Power, that was started in 2018. Um, B-Town Reproductive Rights, I think that was started um, as well. And I just thought this was a great example. Enough is Enough was started in 2018, I think by um, one of the members who went on to be part of NAPOF and, and HAP. Um, so I just thought this was like an example of that tremendous vibrancy, right? Like we start off in 2018 with one organization, we did get co-sponsors and things um, to come out and march with us. And then we end with this like, like look at this range of groups just focused on reproductive justice, right? That all are like strong and vibrant and doing really amazing things. Um, and then I had some pictures. So like, this is an early thing. We did a, um, we did a fundraiser for the pack on um, The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know if you remember that. We tried to dress up as hands, as like, <laughs> but um, we were like tales of women's candidates. We aren't gonna go back. Um, we have, this is recently at Pride. Um, this, I think, was from 2020. It says, are you angry that we are losing our rights? Well, so are we, right? Um, I just love our messaging. I think um, Natalia and Julie and Mandy were responsible for a lot of the messaging. And here, this is our um, our display at the Monroe County History Museum, right, which I thought was really cool. It, it, it you know, it's like all these things put together and shows um, some of the work that um, that we've done and like we literally made history, right? So um i think that was really important um and so one of the things i wanted to highlight with the, those posts right in the beginning it was just like just monroe county now and a bunch of people with those like signs and labels and and that we were trying to get people to like um call their representatives and everything and you see by the end it's like six or seven groups and this is just reproductive justice right if we're talking about another issue there'll be like another whole set of groups and everybody's like sharing um you know, everyone is, oh, I skipped one of them. Let me do it again. Um, everyone is sharing ideas, amplifying one another and sort of making sure that um, that these issues, like we're not gonna like get away with people being unaccountable. At least they're gonna hear from us, no matter what. We may not be able to like um, alter somebody's vote or whatever, but they're gonna hear from us. So the other really big accomplishment, I think of Monroe County now has been get out the vote efforts. And this is another example of like, look, now we have totally different groups from that previous slide, right? We have IU Student Government, the League of Women Voters, um, Chamber of Commerce, NAACP, IU Civic Leaders, right? Are all part of this voter drive. Um, and this one I think was from 2020, if I'm right. It was, it was a 2020 election. And then this one on the right, is this last election, last November of 2023. Um, and again, you see this like amazing group of organizations and um, and then, you know, amazing graphics. Um, that's the other thing about this group is always, it always has amazing graphics and cool t-shirts and stuff. Um, but um, I just wanted to say then, 
Um, so you, I, I just felt like that was like a little snapshot of like, it was a group of people who started this organization. Um, everybody learned so much and how to build power and how to mobilize and how to have your voice heard and then kept going, even as like people are trying to shut down these voices and say, you don't matter and we don't care about your opinion. And, you know, and we kept going and you can see, I think it's such an accomplishment you know, it, it may be again that we couldn't stop the abortion ban because it was just the deck was too stacked and like there was not much we could do about, you know, um, a conservative supermajority or something. But look at what we did do, right? We like have this incredibly vibrant group of people doing amazing things and they're going to keep doing it and it builds over time. And that's what the mobilization is. And so all the things that are happening is just this moment in time. Like there's going to be a moment where we can make more change and, and do things. Um, and I, you know, and this was really influential for me and part of the reason that um, I decided to run for office. Um, and I think that I won by really applying the lessons that I learned in Monroe County now or with this group of people, right? Which is how do you, it's, it's this understanding that it might be certain groups of people that vote all the time, but there are so many people who care and they don't know how to engage. So how do we reach them, right? So. Um, so we went out and I was so proud of like reaching out to like almost every um, voter of color that we could find to talk to different groups who were never part of like general city government or county government or just were just ignored if they tried to be like sort of how like you come do public comment and then no one mentions that you were even there so people don't know that you were there right and to reach out to those groups and I decided like my goal wasn't even to win my goal was to um, bring to get um, to um, get out the vote and get people who didn't normally vote in municipal elections to vote. And that was gonna be my goal. And I was like, if I can move that number up, I've succeeded no matter what happens, even if I lose by like 80% or something, if I can like get turnout up, especially among um, groups who don't traditionally vote in municipals, then I'll count that as a win. And I was so proud that I think we got, um, we had some of the highest turnout um, ever in municipal elections. and my district had the highest turnout out of all the districts. And when you break down the numbers, almost all of the new voters weren't new voters who had moved into the city, but people who were already registered, but traditionally just voted in presidential elections and never voted in municipals. And so I'm really, really proud of that. And that was all because of what I learned through the people in this group that um, you go meet people where they are. You don't expect them to come to meetings that they don't know about or you know, be responsive to a government that may not seem responsive to them, right? You go where people are, you go to the cultural meeting, like groups, the like meetings in people's homes, in their neighborhoods, and you just talk to, you know, I just talk to like all the friends of like my, um, my daughter's school friends, like all their parents, you just talk to people wherever they are and find out what they care about and then figure out how you can help with that. Um, and, and even if all you can do at a particular moment is just bring them to the table or have their voice be amplified, that's a huge thing, given that those things don't happen on a normal basis. So, um, so I'm really proud of that. And as I said, it's because of the people here and the things I learned here, and I wish I could have served out my time and, and, and not moved. And I'm going to blame larger forces in the state of Indiana and the university and things for that, that I didn't have control over. But um, the last thing I want to say is that I also think all these issues that we raised, um, we could have had government and people in power um, address all of these. And sometimes sometimes they did. I, so I meant to mention, um, so I said the farmer's market, these kind of national debates over intersectionality and how things were going to work. Um, then we had um, the FedEx shootings that really affected what was happening in Bloomington and then finally the bus attack um, last year and all of these were things that that our state local or national government could have done something about and most of the time they didn't um, we did have some local leaders who stepped up in things but for the most part the people who had the power to do something didn't do anything and it was left to groups like Monroe County now and nonprofit groups and not even nonprofit groups but groups of like ordinary people like people who are like in their living rooms or whatever to say something and do something about these things or you know groups like the Asian Culture Center, groups like HAP. And um, I'm really proud that we're doing this work, but it's really important that we're not the only ones doing this work. It's really, really important that the people who have the ability to create change um, or have the ability to pass laws or have the ability to put resources in a certain direction that they are doing something about these issues too, right? So 
Um, so that's my like general call to action. I, I know I should end. So I'm getting, so that's my general call to action for like everybody. Like, how do we create a community where that's what's happening? That it's not, the burden isn't on the people most affected to create the change. It's that everybody's working together to create the change. Um, and the last thing I'll end with is the other thing I'm really proud of Monroe County now, and that's been part of my experience is that we're able to build, bring our whole selves to this group and the work. Um, and you saw that with me, like Mandy was saying, I showed up and I was pregnant at the first meeting. And I remember one of the meetings in May, in April, um, I showed up and I was like talking about something and no one could see my stomach because the table was really high. And then, and then someone was like, oh yeah, when are you due? And I was like, oh, tomorrow. And everyone's like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't feel any labor pain. So I just showed up because I didn't, you know, but, but like, it didn't matter that I was like waddling around and couldn't see over my stomach. And I was there and, and like, I always brought my daughter to meetings and like, no one cared and were happy. And like I said, it wasn't even just that people didn't care that she was there. It was like, if she fussed when I was doing something, someone else would just pick her up and rock her, whatever. And then Mandy would bring her kids like people, you know, and then I feel like Tammy Joe and I were talking about like our whole selves and like, you know, we had this conversation, Tammy Joe, about whether to bring like your whole I'm interpreting it as whether to bring your whole self to this group and would that be OK? And I was like, that's what this group is for. Like you do the work, but you do it as your whole authentic self and not like the professional version of you that's wearing a certain suit or whatever it's just like whoever you are like no one cares if you show up in sweatpants with like baby food smeared on your shirt or whatever. Um, you just do it and you're there and it's like and you don't have to hide who you are or what your life is like or what you're doing it's just here you are and you're ready to do it. Um, so then I was just going to end with like um, and the best part of it is having all of you as friends and like people that I know will be lifelong friends so. I'll stop there because I think I like talked way past the time I was supposed to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's open the floor now if anyone has questions or comments. I know for several of us, this has just been emotional to hear you talk. Um, not just because of what you've helped us remember, but also because you're going to be sorely missed. Um, not just in this organization, but in this city. So okay. does anyone have any questions or comments? I just wanna say thank you so much, Ruthie. Like you've taught our organization so much and you've been um, such an inspiration and such a wealth of knowledge um, that like we could never replace you. So thank you. Well, I've learned so, so much and you can't get rid of me. Because first of all, I can join Zoom and then I'm close enough that I can go back and forth. So. Shruti, I have a, oh, go ahead, Natalia. Shruti, your caucus is coming up. Like, what would you like to see um, in um, the next person that represents District 5? Like, what would you like to see continue? It's really, really important to me that the conversations we started and the engagement we started continue. And so it's important to me to see specific, defined, and consistent outreach to people of color, um, to people who were voting for the first time in this past election, and people who don't normally um, participate in, in municipal anything. Like, um, And so I feel like you know, there are so many people that I know we got involved in doing things like public comment and coming to meetings or just even connecting people. And I think it has to be done in this, um, it, it has to be done in this like respectful, authentic way, not as in I want your votes, vote for me, or like, you know, maybe I'll do something for you if I can or something, but the way that we did it, right, which is like, look at these problems we have, the only way we're going to solve it is to do it together. How can we come together and come up with the best solution? And part of the way that we do that is hear from everybody and listen to everybody and include everybody in the conversation. And so, um, and again, I think we have to it's not enough for someone to say nice things about inclusion or how much they care about different communities. Um, I want to see somebody doing the actual work, like going door to door, going to organizations, holding, you know, sharing the burdens with people, carrying, you know, some of these burdens and amplifying people and like connecting people in in real substantive ways, as opposed to 
um, you know, superficial ways. I think Eva is going to join us now. Um, but um, so that's so important to me. And if there's, I, I'm really sad that I personally can't keep doing that. But as I said, I'm going to keep doing that as much as I can from somewhat afar and from, you know, visits and things. But um, I just think we left this template and people and ties and activated networks that are just waiting for someone to come in and be genuinely respectful and responsive and caring and mobilize those groups and create the type of city that that we want to live in right and that we want to see going forward and and just going back to what i was saying about like that people come here because they think it's like liberal and welcoming and then they leave for the reasons when they find out that it's not that's that's the change that we can make we have the ingredients and we have the people that can make things better we just need to change the structures that Yay. lead people to be ignored or Yay. um, um Mommy, I'm or live happily ever after no. e eva's learning how to read and so she's i just read this book to myself even though you okay do you want to say hi to everyone So half of the, the, a lot of the personal pictures I didn't post because they have Eva all over them in various stages of like things that she'll be embarrassed about when she's older, but that I thought were really cute at the time. Like I, she was like holding a sign at one of the rallies and then, um, and she loves rainbows. I don't know that she quite understands the meaning yet, but she was always like a putting quality. rainbows. Oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> she just shouted equality if you didn't hear that. So equality is what rainbows mean. That's right. Well, good, good. Eva, Eva absorbed more than 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 we thought. <laughs> also, oh. quality rainbow right there. That's right. Julie has an equality <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> uh, Heather asked a question in the chat. Um, she says, "I just want to know that you'll keep participating in local organizations, government, wherever you're going, because you're such a valuable member of whatever community you're in." I hope to. I mean, I don't know if there's a place like Bloomington where I can like ever meet people like you all and do this kind of work. Um, but I'm gonna try. Like, I can't replace you at all either. But um, I don't know. Once you like, once you see how like hard work can actually make a difference, even if it's over time and not the like particular issue that you're looking at, um, <laughs> then you just want to keep doing it, right? Um, and then I always said that Eva was my reason for for doing things, right? We always have. I always say all these things about how it's like heartbreaking that my daughter has fewer rights than I did. And that's not, unfortunately, that's not changing anytime soon, right? It so, did change eventually, the then it got taken away. Yeah, well, she got her iPad privileges taken away, but yeah. But <laughs> well, that, in real life, it did get taken away completely after yeah. it got back all the way. Yeah, I'll that's say, right. You never see daylight again. Yeah, great. We, we've been discussing the 14th Amendment and stuff, but um, yes, I love that, that yes, our girls deserve better. Yeah, so as long as like that's the situation, which I don't see foresee, I don't foresee changing in my lifetime. I don't, I mean, I, I foresee things getting better, but just not reaching full equality, then like we have to be out there doing this work, right? We just have to. And we do it in whatever ways we can, right? Doing something at school, doing something wherever you are. Um, I did have another question for you. So I remember, you know, I think it was in February when we started getting together in the different organizations and there was like a huge group of people who showed up for communication. Like, you know, you mentioned like 20, 25 people. And we had a couple people who took on the position of director and chair. And within a couple of months, they had disappeared because they got pushback. They also worked at IU. Did you ever get any pushback from the university for being involved in this or other organizations in Bloomington to fight for people's rights? You know, that's a really good question. So I, you know, because I have this like legal background, I try to be really, really careful about conflicts and things like that. And I like never use my university email for anything personal and, you know, vice versa. I try to keep these strict lines. So I don't even know um, you know, but I, of course I'd like, you know, always put on my conflicts of interest form what organizations I was a part of. Um, I don't think I ever felt any pushback in the sense that I was always very clear about like I have First Amendment rights and as a private citizen and can do certain things. Um, 
I didn't feel pushback so much as recently, I feel like the environment in Indiana and IU has changed in the sense that there was um, some attempts to penalize people for talking about the abortion ban and things like that in the fact in the faculty council context and things like that. And, you know, I wasn't part of those things in a way that I was in any way at risk, but um, I did feel like that those kinds of things are chilling right and um and it's very hard to when you're doing this kind of work you're caring about the people that you're impacting and it's very hard to think that because of your particular position or something you might be um you know a target or like you know you might be the person that that's that that some groups tries tries to go after to stop the work from being done right and to me i think it goes back to i don't i don't know anyone who ends up doing this work for like the glory of it or whatever. I mean, there are people who are doing it for the glory of it and they're not actually doing the work, right? They're just kind of doing their own thing. And the people who are doing it for the real work, it's like when I was saying that like we can all carry each other's burdens and like hand things off when needed, I feel like you can also disappear into the crowd when needed, right? Like I don't feel like I need to get attention for coming up with a certain idea or something. It's more important to me that someone takes that idea and that it it creates a positive change. Um, and so I see that that's so I think in a in a particular in a politically fraught environment, that's one way that people can do things like, you know, you work together in a group and share your ideas in the group and you don't have to be the spokesperson or anything, but you can still kind of contribute energy and time and ideas. Um, I don't know if I don't know if that makes sense exactly, but um, but I, I do think, you know, because I have you know, because I'm a law professor, there's like a different people really understand the divisions between private activities and public and work activities and not. And so it's a little bit easier in a law school context than in other places, I think. Um, so I could see that there could be a lot of pushback in different areas. Anyone else have any questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, I look forward to seeing all of you at future meetings and please do, if you want to volunteer in any way, uh, shoot me an email. I will enclose that again. Um, so you can get a hold of me. I try to check this email at least every other day, but we were talking about, you know, boundaries and stuff, um, <laughs> having healthy boundaries. Um, and if you have ideas about things we can do or ways that we can expand upon the projects that Natalia is working on, these are really important projects. Um, and I'm so glad they're continuing. And she's just been on top of the ball, you guys. I mean, just top of the ball. And so far the whole board has just been on top of it. So thank you all. Thank you, Shirdy. All right, thank you everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.